What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2021 Lexus LC500 convertible. Huge thanks to Lexus for providing me here with the brand new 2021 LC500 convertible to review for you guys today. So yes, this is all new for 2021. The first time the LC has ever been offered with a convertible and man, talk about a stunning entrance. I already think that the standard LC500 is one of the most gorgeous looking cars on the market today. I mean, they're just jaw droppingly beautiful from every single angle and although this color this white isn't quite as striking as some of the bolder colors you can get from the Alexis here for the LC500 I still think it looks really good in white especially with this red leather interior which you can really show off well with the convertible top being down but I just love how three-dimensional that grille is and how it kind of curves inward and it just looks so cool I still love those headlights this whole car just looks like a concept car still and it's just amazing they were able to bring this to production just the way it is further adding to that concept car look you have these 21 inch wheels here um, which are awesome they're wrapped in Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires and look very cool and I also love the little vent you have there in the side skirt and going out back that is the biggest change here to the LC500 of course uh, getting rid of the roof and uh, you know so it's less of a fastback shape um, with the top off like it is with the normal coupe and uh, so they have also redesigned that trunk lid there so you now have your third brake light there instead of it being in the upper window of the coupes and that means you do sacrifice the little uh, optional uh, electronically activated spoiler you have there in the back on the coupes and so you don't get that here on the convertible so a little less sporty uh, but uh, it's totally fine in my book because I think that you know having this glorious V8 engine and enjoying it with the top down um, just makes the experience even better and so uh, I think it looks fantastic out back so I love how those taillights kind of uh, drop down into the rear bumper there the really nice exhaust finishers you have there in the lower part of the rear bumper and just everything about this car like I said every single angle it is jaw droppingly beautiful I just can't get enough of this design I just think they did such a good job especially when you see it in person the proportions you know it's larger and a little bit has a little bit more presence to it than a lot of other hundred thousand dollar you know vehicles like this all right so start off and go for a drive the LC 500 has this really cool key uh, it's kind of a unique shape it's different than some other Lexuses of the past uh, has some nice texture to it a little bit of a rubberized material some buttons there on the back and uh, just a nice key really nice substantial weight to it but of course this keyless access keyless entry and push button start so you just leave the key in your pocket hit the end and start button and it roars to life every single time you start it up it revs like that and i love it it sounds so good <laughs> And if you're curious to hear about the interior in the LC500 convertible, my wife and I actually did a full in-depth interior review on this car. So you can go watch that video. I'll link it above if you want to hear all our thoughts on the interior. But overall, it's just as cool and futuristic looking as the exterior. Totally unique to any other Lexus and uh, is just so cool with so many awesome design elements. It really helps this interior to feel special. All right, so setting off here in the LC500 convertible. Well, I'm just setting off very gingerly here, just driving through a quiet park. And this shows just how serene the LC500 convertible can be. Even though it's got a roaring V8, it does have an active exhaust, so it'll quiet itself down whenever you're you know, not at aggressive throttle positions. And then you barely even hear it as you putt along. Very smooth, comfortable ride here as well in the LC500. They added some structural bracing here to the suspension and the other components underneath the vehicle here to help it to have a more solid ride. And that does increase the weight by over 200 pounds. I think it's like 217 pounds to be exact. Um, but it does stiffen up this chassis so that, you know, of course, without the roof, uh, you have the same amount of structural rigidity. So you have a similar driving experience to what you would get in the coupe. Other things to note, so uh, visibility is also pretty good here in the LC500. So, you know, you have a pretty thin A-pillar here um, and you have a pretty high seating position. Now, you're not sitting on the floor like you are in some sportier convertibles. Uh, you, of course, have great views around the side and the back. Although with the uh, cloth top up here, you will see that there's a very narrow slit for the window there. And I will be judging that over the next few days of driving here to see, uh, you know, if that ends up being enough visibility there out of the back or not. But you do have, of course, the full Lexus safety suite here with blind spot monitoring backup camera all those types of things to help you out with your visibility as well even if you do have that roof up but of course here with the roof down you just get to take in your surroundings and it's really a great experience another thing you notice about the LC500 
Um, so it's been a couple of years since I drove one, but uh, they are so much fun to drive and very responsive. But what I've noticed is, especially here in normal mode, you have a little bit of a softer brake pedal. I do wish it had more bite towards the top of the pedal to help it feel a little more responsive. Throttle response is also appropriately casual here in the normal mode. I do wish it was, again, a little bit more sensitive, but that's what you have the drive modes for. You just put it up into the uh, Sport or Sport Plus modes, and then it gets as responsive as you'd like. Steering also has a little bit of a lighter weight here in normal mode, but then again, once you put it up into those more aggressive modes, then it will get heavier and feel appropriately sporty. And now just pulling out onto a main road. A little bit more of that V8 and uh, it's a really nice open air experience. So, you know, depending on your height, of course, your seat will be in a different position as far as, you know, how much of the windshield comes into your view here. But it gives me a pretty open air experience. And uh, of course, I love the fact, you know, there aren't any roll hoops behind you or anything. You just have a totally open uh, rear deck lid there, which is great. You do have a little bit of a wind deflector there to help, you know, keep the wind buffeting down. We'll go on the highway later and kind of see, you know, how the wind noise is on the highway. but. Here at, you know, 40 miles an hour on a main road, it's not too bad, you know? I mean, I do have to raise my voice a little bit. It's not super quiet in here, but that's the same with any convertible. But compared with, you know, some of the lower price convertibles, I think this is definitely a little bit more refined. And it really is a solid feel going down the road too. I mean, you have a very smooth ride. You do have adaptive dampers and stuff. So you can change those with the different drive modes and things as well. But uh, it just really glides along here. I mean, this road's a pretty smooth road, but um, it's a very luxurious feeling convertible and is great, you know, at relaxed speeds if that's all you want to do. All right, so we're going to put it up into the Sport Plus mode here and let's turn down onto this back road and see how it does. Here we go. <laughs> downshift too. You won't even let me go down to first until I'm in the lower gear here. There we go. <laughs> Holy crap, this thing sounds way better than the coupe. Man, okay. So anyway, the LC500 convertible here runs the 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine. It does 471 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque. 0 to 60 for the coupe is 4.4 seconds. They haven't uh, announced a time for the convertible, but since it's, you know, a couple hundred pounds heavier, I would guess it's going to be somewhere in the 4.5 to 4.6 second range for the 0 to 60. And, uh, you know, that still is plenty quick. And honestly, I think it feels a little faster than that. Yes, it's a little bit heavier and stuff, uh, but uh, it still gets up and goes really, really well. And it does such a good concert for you, too, whenever it does get up and move. But Another little acceleration here. So see, it's quieter whenever you're like half throttle. So it really, once it knows you're floored and you're really going for it, or you're over like over half throttle, um, that's where it really gets loud and boisterous. And oh, man, that was way better than I was even expecting it to be. But an important thing to note, so now we're on a rougher road here, and you can hear that, you know, there's maybe a little bit more road noise, but it's so subdued, and that goes to show just how luxurious this is for a convertible. It really keeps the noise down very nicely. But we're coming to some corners here. Let's see how the LC500 handles them. All right, so it's pretty flat. There's a tiny bit of lean built in here. And honestly, I wish, I don't think the suspension is really doing much as far as changing in Sport Plus mode here, because it still feels a little floatier. I wish the steering was a little bit heavier and sporty feeling, but <laughs> even wanted to slide the back end out on me there a little bit. So we are running these Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires that are 275 wide in the back there on these huge 21 inch wheels. So you don't have much sidewall, so there's no flex in the tire. And the Michelin Pilot Super Sport is one of the best tires you can get. So no tire complaints there. It's just. Um, you know, I think they just made it a little bit softer here. Ooh, listen to that! For the convertible. And yeah, this feels a little less sharp, I think, than the coupe with the sport pack. It's just off the top of my head. Um, that felt a little bit sharper than this does. And I think I am feeling that extra 200 pounds in the corners a little bit. Um, 
So it's not a scalpel on a back road. You know, this isn't the you know super sharp, super focused sports car uh, like some of the other convertibles that this competes with in this price range would be. But um, I think this definitely has a little bit more of a luxurious feel to it. But still, it's very, very sporty. It just feels like uh, turning is a little bit slower than I would like as well. I wish things were, again, a little bit sharper. But then you hear that exhaust. And that's something you're not going to get with any of the competition these days. Nobody runs a nationally aspirated V8 in this segment anymore. It is so amazing. And it's, there's no artificial help either, by the way. It's just that valve in the exhaust, but there is no sound that's being pumped through, you know, from the speakers or anything. You do have a sound tube that goes straight from the intake and pipes the sound in, but it's all natural, real sound. No artificial help there. And so that's how you get that unique induction note here with this V8. It's just, it floods the cabin with V8 sound, and if you love naturally aspirated V8 engines, this is going to probably sell itself just on that fact alone, because this is a sound you're not going to get in any of the competition. Like, I did already review the AMG GT with the uh, convertible version of that, and, um, you know, that runs a twin-turbo V8 very fast, sharper than this, I think, um, and feels a little faster than this as well. And you do have a V8 sound, it's muffled by turbos a little bit, but you do have crackles and pops in that, and that's a little bit sharper, but I think this is going to be a little more comfortable, a little bit more of a usable convertible you can just cruise in every day. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of very strong com competitors, but I think that this has them all beat on sound, just as far as a pure, just glorious V8 sound. It's just something I could listen to all day. Ah, oh, it just sounds so, so good. But yeah, so far, Lexus has just said that they have, you know, retuned the suspension, of course, for the extra weight and for all the extra structural braces that they've added here to the LC500. But beyond those braces that they used to beef this up, uh, it really isn't going to be any different than a normal LC500 as far as how it drives, uh, again, aside from that little bit of extra weight you have. But I think, you know, it just takes the amazing formula of the LC that you already have and that I already loved. If you watch my coupe review, you'll see how over the moon I am with the LC. And then just taking the roof off and getting more and more of that V8 sound only sweetens the deal in my opinion. I just, I don't remember it ever having those like gunshots whenever you downshift. It is amazing. I'm so glad that they made this exhaust as rowdy as they did. It's so sweet. But then you can put it back in the normal or the comfort drive modes and then just relax whenever you're not on a back road. And it is really just so at home just being a cruiser. I think that's what it prefers to do. Although, like I said, it is still a very fun partner on a back road as well. But um, it does have a lot of great stuff built in to help keep you comfortable, even with the roof off, regardless of what the temperature is. So it has heated and cooled seats here, which of course help. You also have a heated steering wheel. And then there's also the Lexus Climate Concierge, they call it. And so if it senses that the temperatures outside are cold, um, but yet you are still having the top down, then it will pump extra heat through the vents to make sure your hands stay warm and there's also neck warmers built into the uh, headrest here and so that will actually blow warm air on your neck in the colder months uh, if you want it to of course and that'll again help to keep you nice and toasty even whenever you're driving this with the top down whether it's you know the fall the winter whatever it'll do it it even has a snow mode still so you can drive this in the snow with the roof off and still be pretty comfortable I think which is awesome that they give you that flexibility <laughs> Oh, it sounds so good. And it still, it still drives so well. And I actually like the extra body motions because although it doesn't make this feel super sharp, it really makes the whole experience so dramatic. And uh, man, oh man, it is just such a blast. And I love how it wants to oversteer. I mean, the whole thing is so involving and so exciting. I really like, you know, the more that I, the more corners I take it around, the more that I think I enjoy the softer suspension of this car. It really gives you a feeling you don't get with all the razor sharp stuff with all the competitors these days. And I actually really like the way that it drives. But anyway, I'm gonna be driving the LC500 convertible here for the next few days. So I'm gonna go take it on the highway, see how the wind noise is there, and anything else I notice here in my next few days with the LC500 convertible. It should be fun. So I've been driving the Lexus LC500 convertible for a couple of days now, 143 miles so far. And man, I've loved every single one of those miles. This is one of the press cars that's gonna be real hard to give back because 
It is just so much fun. Obviously, I mean, it's a great combination of, you know, open air experience, the roaring V8 engine, the gorgeous looks, uh, but it's just such a nice thing to live with. I think that's what really separates the LC500 from some of the sportier stuff, again, like the AMG GTS convertible and stuff like that. So I think, you know, this has that softer suspension. And so whenever I was on the back road, you know, I was kind of surprised by that. But then I forgot that the 2019 LC500 actually had this whole suspension uh, redone to make it softer. Um, and so the 2018 I drove was a lot of a sportier setup. And so they softened it up for 2019. And I think a lot of those changes carry over here to the convertible for 2021. Um, but having said that, uh, one of the options you can get for the LC500 convertible here is you can get an optional suspension package and so it gives you a torsion, limited slip differential, and Yamaha performance dampers. During the time that I had the LC500 convertible here, I didn't have a window sticker available at that time, unfortunately. Uh, after the fact, Lexus did provide me with a window sticker a couple weeks later and uh, I was able to confirm that this vehicle did have that Yamaha performance damper and the limited slip differential. So that is one small little package, about $500, well worth getting for that better traction and performance so that is the one sporty thing. Unfortunately, the convertibles are not available with the four-wheel steering you can get on the coupes. And so that's kind of a bummer. So I think the convertible will definitely be the less sportier of the two. Uh, but of course, that open air experience makes up for it, I think. And another thing I forgot to mention uh, while I was on camera there was that uh, this vehicle runs a 10-speed automatic transmission, just like the regular coupe version does. Uh, but I noticed that the shifts were a little bit quicker than what I remember in the 2018. They were also very quick and responsive back then, but I think Think they have improved the tuning of it since then and um, I mean it was very very impressive maybe not quite dual clutch fast but very close to it and you have the smoothness of a normal torque converter automatic here with it as well and so to me I think it's the perfect transmission here for the LC500 convertible. There's only a couple different packages you can get here for the convertible. One is a all-weather package which gives you a heated steering wheel. There's also a touring package which gives you the uh, heated neck uh, area, the little um, you know neck warmer. And that was really nice by the way. I was driving on the highway a good bit last night whenever it was a little bit colder and uh, having the windows up but the top still down having that neck warmer on was really great and combined I just was listening to music here on this uh, Mark Levinson reference 915 watt stereo and made for a really relaxing and just such a soothing experience and then you know all you gotta do is a little twitch of your right foot and then you get the glorious exhaust sounds that go along with whatever music you're listening to and it's just such a comfortable cruiser as well. I mean, yeah, it will dance around in corners and it will play with you, but it doesn't beat you up all the time. Even, like I said, the AMG GTS, I think, is one of the closest competitors, and that really has a stiff ride, and I don't know if I'd want to drive one of those every day. This, I can see myself daily driving, and honestly, even with the roof up, the blind spots aren't bad, because um, the way they did this cloth top, you know, you have still a pretty generously sized quarter window there, and so you can look over your shoulder and still have decent amounts of visibility, which is great. But I mean, you know, who even needs a stereo whenever you have this exhaust sound? It is so fantastic. I think the only thing I would possibly want to do is maybe just leave that valve open all the time. Because I think there's probably some really good sounds you can get under, you know, like 3,000 RPMs before that valve opens up that would make this even sweeter. But I do like the dual mode character because really, you know, if you're cruising at a slow speed, you don't really want a ton of exhaust sound usually anyway. But I think if you did have that opened up all the time, this would sound exactly like a Maserati Gran Turismo because whenever it is opened up, it sounds just like that. And so really you could look at this almost as like, I mean, the Gran Turismo, the Gran Cabrio is pretty outdated at this point, but this is like a much sexier, more reliable version of one of those kind of, and uh, you know, very similar pricing as well. This is actually cheaper than the uh, Gran Cabrio by a good bit, but you've better looks, way better reliability with the Lexus here. And I mean, yeah, sure you don't have a Maserati badge, but who cares? Because while the Maserati is getting killed with repair fees, uh, this, you know, you keep on driving and you have a worry-free ownership experience. I really am so glad that Lexus is back in the convertible game because I think they really have done this well. And yes, the enthusiasts like myself, sure, I would love it to be sportier, but then you would sacrifice comfort. I mean, you know, there is the rumored LCF coming that will probably have a convertible version as well, and that could address those enthusiasts who do want the harder edge to this. But I think this has such broad appeal. It is great for enthusiasts like myself that still love it, but for those who just want some nice, luxurious, top-down experience, and you don't want to go for another S-Class Cabriolet like everybody else does, get one of these. You'll stand out, you'll have 
less uh, to pay for as far as dealership costs and stuff and you know, have gorgeous looks as well. And even if you don't want to drive with the top down, like I said, in addition to the decent visibility, you actually have a four layer cloth top here, which actually keeps it pretty well insulated. I didn't do a ton of driving uh, with the top up because admittedly it's just been gorgeous weather and why would you drive with the top up? But I did drive briefly with the top up a couple of times and you know, it's a very nice experience as well. But uh, clearly if you're buying this, it's because you want to drop the top. Otherwise the coupe is a fantastic choice still and I would wholeheartedly recommend one of those if you don't want a convertible version. And another convertible thing to mention is the the wind buffeting is pretty mild as well. I was even cruising at like 75 on the highway with all the windows down and it wasn't beating me up, which a lot of other convertibles, that's a pretty violent experience. This it wasn't. But of course, if you do wanna, you know, dull things a little bit, you can roll up the windows, still have the open top experience, and then it's even more refined. And so, um, yeah, I think they've really engineered this well. There is a little bit of like cowl shake that I kind of feel over some bumps. It's probably not the stiffest convertible. And to me, it's not a big deal if it's not a super stiff convertible. You know, like I said, this isn't supposed to be an autocross car and for what you're using it for, it's totally fine. And combined with that Yamaha Performance Damper setup, you can also get those 20 inch forged wheels, which will help drop some unsprung weight out of those wheels. And that should definitely give you some more agile handling as well. This one does not have that. This one has the 21 inch wheels instead. The 20s are smaller, but having them be forged, I think will really help, you know, to give you a little bit of additional sportiness if that's what you're looking for out of the standard LC500 convertible. The 500 convertible is fantastic fun. And like right now, we're starting to get a little bit of rain. And thankfully, the final thing to mention is this top goes up and down. It speeds up to 31 miles per hour, and it does it in just uh, 16 seconds to go up. So I will demonstrate here before we get rained on too badly. Doing 30. And just like that, 16 seconds, it's up and we're good. But yeah, overall, I think it's fantastic. And if I had the money to get one of these, I think I actually would. That's how much I love it. It is just fantastic. And again, combined with the Lexus reliability, which they're famous for, and that's really one of the best selling points of the LC500 here and any Lexus for that matter. But yes, that's it as far as all my thoughts here on the LC500 convertible. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.